first time I saw that thin strip of highway stretch down the fan of the Santa Rosa Mountains, I was 25 years old, a geologist from Denver, full of my own independence, intoxicated by the freedom and the emptiness of the desert after years in eastern cities. Still, this junction of highways, this turn in my path, stopped me cold for some moments. I pulled over. That day, there was dust in the air, the light diffusing shades of gold and yellow. The road disappeared into the distance of the late afternoon, across the wide valley, between two ranges, sinking into sediment. Another great expanse of valley was barely visible beyond that, backed by more dark ridges. There are afternoons when storms rage across that emptiness and do not fill its vastness. Light suffuses rain, or snow, or dust, or smoke of lightning fires. It seems like the entrance to another world, a world in which a storm can be visibly contained within a space, in which quirks of topography and air mass, humidity and temperature, interact as though on a stage. Then I feel small and large, part of the storm, part of the dust, part of the cradling ranges that promise something greater than the storm. It is a world in which the outrageous visions of painters like Bierstadt seem more documentary than romance. I have driven this stretch of empty country a thousand times since that first day, and I am still seduced by it. We can scribe a circle, an area of influence, let us say, around our home, 50 miles. It's a long way, and yet in the desert, not so long. 50 miles from home, if home is the center of our circle, you can sit on a barren peak, the shushing of wind through short high-altitude grasses, the only sound. Hide in a cool cave beneath that peak and let your eyes stretch the length of the blinding summer playa. Follow the rhythms of life on the ranch, along the base of mountains in winter, into the foothills and the big, cool basins of summer, where men and animals find shelter under Aspen. Run your fingers along the rough edges of shapes carved by lonely men from another land, names, dates, the curving form of a woman's hip echoing the silver curve of Aspen trunk. I was here, alone, a long time ago. Follow the rhythms of the people who live this life now, families, neighbors. Watch that life changing, the old ways going. There are still ranching families who pass the old skills to their grandchildren, but they are fewer each year. This is a collection of images, in photographs and in words, of the country in our circle, of the places we do our work and raise our children, of the people who teach us about the place we live and about each other. There is no richer world than here, just 50 miles from home.
The desert is a difficult environment to live in and to nurture. It will flourish, but it takes patience and knowledge of when to act and when to wait in the shade until it's time to act. Each of us is nurtured in our own way by the deep rhythm of the seasons on the land, by the motion of light on the hills, the simple joy of a season of rain after drought. Watching the way a sagebrush flings seed, the manic growth of its offspring in a wet winter, getting the tiny start that will bring it through the hot months of summer, when everything seems to hunker down and wait. Most of the desert is hidden inside time. It is not possible to see it in a season, maybe not in a lifetime. The waves of plant and animal life, the way wet seasons move boulders off the mountain, give a glimpse of a much larger pattern in the fabric. A pattern that moves over our circle, like shadows ripple across sand in shallow water. Control of this land has long since passed from the people who have cared for it. Five Deferina brothers came to this land from the Basque provinces on the border between France and Spain in the early years of the last century. Of the five, one died young in a desert sheep camp. Two returned to their homeland in the Pyrenees mountains of Spain. And finally, two stayed. Tom and Alex persisted and made a home for a time in this empty landscape. In the 1930s, Tom's ranch was taken for wildlife refuge. By 1940, Alex's place had passed into the hands of wealthy men who live far away. The vast majority of Western land is public, controlled by the whim of politicians, and lately, by corporate muscle masquerading as environmentalism. So we wonder, do the powerful always push those less powerful into history? Popular myth says we are a culture on the cusp of extinction, yet the ranching culture, that culture that permits the generations to mingle, that allows grandchildren to work shoulder to shoulder with grandparents, persists. The relationship with the land has less to do with ownership than with covenant, as does the relationship between the generations. For the Basque people, a Stone Age people transplanted from ancient roots, the covenant with the new landscape is, in a sense, a continuation of covenant with the old. Their love of life and the land, work and family, sounds a quiet chord in this empty place. And the music says, the land owns us, not the other way around. We are part and parcel of the ridges and the soggy meadows, the dusty alkali and the storms that cross the emptiness. The circle of family continues, part of the landscape. It is the landscape that sustains our circle and permits it to remain.